everybody, thanks for watching. Now, we have become so uh, consumed by life and reality. A lot of us have forgotten, you know, real history. And we know uh, how important history is because those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now, when you go back and look at history, history tells us exactly who the real enemy of freedom, peace, and humanity really is. When you go back and look at all of the civilizations that have been conquered and taken over, and look at the people who are now in control of these countries, we can see what the agenda really is. Now, we today, African Americans, we are the descendants of these civilizations that have been taken over, conquered. We are the descendants of slaves. And we have forgotten history. We have forgotten, you know, what our ancestors went through. And I say that because when you go back and look at what happened to African Americans or black people after slavery, they understood that there would be a such thing as white privilege. They understood that there would be, you know, white supremacy. To them, it was just a given. It was a, you know, a no brainer. Of course, it's going to be white supremacy. Of course, it's going to be, you know, white privilege because they understood who their captors were. They understood who they were and that, you know, for hundreds of years, these people have ruled this land and have enslaved African people. And there's no way, you know, they were just going to give us, you know, the same level of respect that they had for each other. They wasn't going to give us the same access to uh, to resources that they had. So the slaves, the former slaves understood this and they acted accordingly. You know, they went out and did what they had to do. They understood that it was going to be that much harder for them to succeed, which is why, you know, they work so hard. And you would have to work really hard to obtain success like, you know, Black Wall Street, which is why we always talk about them, because it's amazing that, you know, in the 1920s or before that, they amassed so much wealth and success. It's because they knew they wasn't going to get no handouts. They understood the magnitude of the situation. They understood that, you know, white privilege exists. They understood that white oppression existed and that they had it to uh, be that much more um, successful and work that much more hard to obtain, you know, their goals. So it's almost as if we are suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. A lot of us just have identified so much with this American system. And again, as I talked about before, we don't realize that this is not our culture that we was brought up in a culture that is from, you know, a foreign people, from Europeans. This is a European culture that we have been brought up in. And we believe that, you know, the way we are and the way we act in the African-American community, you know, it's us that we have created our own culture. And this is something that belongs exclusively to African-Americans. But again, as I always talk about, when you examine the culture in the African-American community, it is, uh, you know, it's hurtful, it's harmful to our progress. And that's by design. And you got to understand that the reason why, you know, separation was good is because we controlled our culture. We controlled what came into the black community and what the black community was feeding off or what was fueling the uh, black community. And that was a sense of unity and a sense of wanting to be successful and uh, have real progress. And now, you know, we have been given benefits and privileges and the illusion of freedom. And we believe that now we are supposed to be on equal par as the descendants of our captors. So we got to understand the situation because we have seriously forgotten. And, you know, we scream for, uh, you know, equality and everything like that. And we we feel like, you know, things are supposed to be equal and everybody's demanding justice and this and that. You know, we forget the past and we got to understand that history has shown us that they will never give us the same equal uh, treatment as, um, you know, white people in this country. And everything that we have seen in history is proven that we are, you know, almost delusional for expecting that to happen. And um, I, I understand, you know, what the Constitution talks about. And, you know, we got to remember that it was put together while we were still slaves. And I understand what everybody believes we are entitled to. But we got to look at the fact that now, 2017, this day and age, all this time has, has passed. We have had a black president and um, you would think things would be different. You would think the racial tension that we see today, you know, would not exist. And we got to understand what's fueling that and what's keeping that tension gone. And that's for a reason. So it's almost as if they are trying to tell us that, you know, we're not going to give you uh, 
you know, just a free pass or easy pass to success. You're either going to be a jigaboo or you're going to dance or, you know, be a part of their sports system or their acting system or some kind of system that they control if you want to, you know, get rich. And this is what we're seeing. You know, everybody who is you know, a professional athlete and, you know, in the uh, music and movie industry is basically doing the bidding of the ruling elite. We got to go back and look at what we was doing before integration and understand how economically, you know, they was able to build success, you know, uh, with so much, you know, stacked against them. It's almost no excuse today for us to be where we are at when, you know, things are a lot easier. And you have back in the 20s with Black Wall Street and then yeah, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, which I talked about before that nobody's talking about how we were still successful. They want you to believe that we wasn't. We was not proven that. But um, we got to get back to that. And we got to understand what um, what we were able to do back then before, you know, integration. And it's because we had a sense of understanding that white privilege exists, white supremacy exists. And we got to work our way around it instead of trying to, you know, get the system to accept us and to get the system to let us be a part of it. We got to get together and do our own things like, you know, you know, our ancestors did, like, you know, the people did back in the 20s and, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and everything like that. And um, understand what what's really important in the black community and get away from these trends that have been given to us. As I said, they take everything good from us. All of our leaders, all of our real leaders have been killed, assassinated. So we got to pay attention to what they give us. They give us this culture. We have the hip hop culture because it's destroying us and they understand that. So we got to pay attention. Now, what I'm really going to be getting into in this video is for people to understand the situation that I just described that has happened in this country. As I talked about before, we understand we were already here in America before slavery. Africans was already here. Now, the situation that occurred here with the you know massacre, the genocide of so many the real Native Americans, black people, and the so-called Native Americans that was here, we have to look around the world and see that this has been taking place. We are so consumed with slavery and Jim Crow and civil rights movement and everything like that. We are not looking around the world for the same exact things. We know about apartheid in South Africa. But when you go and you start looking at other countries with people of color, we see the same thing that happened in America happened in Africa. We see colonization. We see imperialization. We see the fact that, you know, you have most of Africa has a constitution. You see African countries with presidents. You know, what's going on? So we get this whole backlash when we start speaking about, you know, white supremacy. And we start speaking about, you know, slavery and everything that happened. And people look at us as if we are crazy for speaking about these things. It was the past. Let it go. Leave it alone. And we can look at Africa and see the same situation going on. What is Sudan doing with a constitution? What is Sudan doing with a president? And a lot of you get confused because they have these black presidents and you think, well, he's black and everything's going to be fine. It's Africa. And you don't realize the same type of system we have here in America is, is over there. They put a puppet in place or they bribe a president or they bribe a leader or threaten a leader and get him to you know, run the country and do their bidding. Why would African countries have a constitution and a president and a lot of these countries over there, same as we do in America? That's something you need to really think about and look into. Now, there's an illusion that a lot of people believe that America is just this great country that is basically uh, doing what's best for its people. When we can clearly look at the conquests of America. And not just that, we got to look at America's allies who was helping them with this conquest. We got to look at England and understand that the two go hand in hand and what's really going on here. So, again, everybody's so consumed with life and reality and, you know, television and entertainment. We're not paying attention to history and we're not paying attention to what's going on around the world and not understanding the colonization that has taken place. Not just in the past, but it's still been taking place, especially in Africa. And we got to understand what's being put in place and what's being set up and how all these African countries, you know, has has been taken over. When you pay attention and look at the countries that has been colonized, I mean, look at the map. This is most of the world. 
that has been colonized. So when we talk about white supremacy, this is what we're talking about. And a lot of people don't understand that you have Europeans going into these countries, uh, trying to bring in uh, religion. You know, it's the same story. They bring in, you know, the missionaries of religion. And once they understand the layout and what's going on, if there's resources, if there's gold or what have you there, then they send in the military or they try to turn the leader, the ruler, to allow them to come in and, um, you know, a set up shop, basically, and to advance their civilization and put their civilization on the same par with their enemies or what have you. It's the same type of story. But eventually, you know, the ruler in, ends up being uh, overthrown. And the Europeans end up taking over. It's the same thing. You know, they'll either, uh, you know, start a coup, a military coup where a military leader takes over and they run it through him or something to that effect. It's the same situation. So why has it still been going on? Slavery ended a long time ago. Why has this consistent colonization of African countries continued to take place? You know, why are they installing constitutions, which we know is a setup as a trap to trick the people? They're installing presidents and systems. These people in Africa were doing fine. The civilizations was doing OK. They were cool. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, a lot of things could have been taught to African people to make their way of life better. But you got to understand that these people have survived for thousands of years without no new innovations, without technology, you know, in a spiritual system. And they have done well. And, um, you know, there was no diseases. And when you have access to the natural resources and you understand about farming, there's no famine. There, are, there, are, there is none of the problems that they have shown us on TV. The reason why they show us this stuff on TV, because when you have a village that is not, you know, uh, doing what you wanted to do, they can block out the resources. They can starve the people. This is done on purpose. And this is what people wasn't understanding about uh, feed the children and everything like that. You had uh, the military basically arm the um, enemies of a lot of these villages, a lot of these groups. And they would basically go in and destroy the food, destroy the crops, destroy the, uh, the economic structure that existed where, you know, the people was able to feed themselves. And then as the children starve, they send the cameras in there and see and say, see, we got to go in and help these people. We got to feed the children. And this is done on purpose. You know, and then now you got African-Americans embarrassed to be called African because they associated with these starving children in Africa. Now, understand that this is Europeans that have come in there and destroyed, you know, the uh, economic structure and, you know, force these people to flee and to starve to death and to you know, to live uh, in subpar conditions. And, you know, they armed their enemies with AK-47s and guns. And we see, uh, you know, all the stuff that has happened since then. We see the the, uh, the uh, groups that have risen up and have basically, you know, torn through Africa, you know, because of, you know, these weapons and because of the lies that has been told. And Africa is basically uh, still, you know, not united, still separated. You know, because of things like this. And you would think with everything that's going on in the world that Africa would have united a long time ago. But we got to understand that colonization, imperialization has been going on in Africa for decades. Because you have to understand, you have to look at history. As I said, these people have existed for thousands of years. All of a sudden, they don't know how to farm. All of a sudden, they don't know how to feed themselves. How have these people existed for thousands of years if we go look in Africa and People are starving to death. You know, we can see their ribs. You see kids, you know, you know, bony, ribs touching. You know, how has this happened? And these people were able to feed themselves for thousands of years and able to survive as civilizations in Africa. And a lot of them uh, did really, really well. Now, all of a sudden, we start seeing in the 90s and everything, all these feed the children commercials and everything like that. What happened? So they got to understand what has been taking place. Everything is an excuse to go into Africa, you know, an excuse to bring in aid, an excuse to examine the land for resources and then extract it, which they have been doing, you know, for decades now. This is this is what has taken place. So you got to understand this colonization. While we're sitting up here arguing about America and America's past and saying that this stuff is over and it's done, this stuff has continued. Now, I put out videos for a reason. You know, when I talked about in my previous videos about Manifest Destiny, 
when we understand that this is what they put in Manifest Destiny, that they was going to expand their territories, you know, basically overseas. And this is what they have done. So they're telling you and things like Manifest Destiny. And, you know, when you look at the divine right theology or uh, divine right theory, this is what has taken place. These people believe that they are supposed to rule. They told you and Manifest Destiny that they was going to expand their territories. They have done that. And we can look around the world and see the military bases everywhere. What's going on? It's not just America, as I talked about before. When America was taken over, they are basically using America to go and, you know, complete their agenda. And we think we're being patriotic and we're being American to go out there and, and kill these people and take their land when we are fulfilling the agenda of the people who have taken over our country. And it's tough for people to see that because, one, these people look white. And we don't understand that, yeah, they are white, they are Europeans, but from different countries, they have no loyalty to America. America has been gone. It's gone. And what, what's happening is you have these uh, white Americans being patriotic and thinking that they're fighting for America, not realizing they're fighting for these Europeans. And these Europeans' uh, desire is to destroy America and use America first to conquer the rest of the world. And this is what has taken place. This is what is still taking place. So we got to understand that Latin America, South America, same situation, colonized. Same situation. You have uh, presidents installed. You have constitutions installed in Latin America. What's going on? Why in all these countries with people of color, we see colonization and paralyzation? You go to Jamaica, you see all these white Jamaicans with the Jamaican accent. That's colonization. And we got to understand what has taken place. Now, you know, it's fine. You know, we got white people in Jamaica, white people in Africa, what have you. That's all well and good. But when you see that and you also see the establishment of a constitution and a president installed and a whole economic situation and a whole governmental structure that resembles America. And we know what happened in America. We got to wake up. You got to open your eyes and look at history and see what's still taking place. And we are so traumatized by slavery and everything that happened with Jim Crow and everything like that. We're not realizing that it's, it's still happening, it's still going on. So when we talk about colonization, when we talk about, you know, white supremacy and everything, this is what we mean. And a lot of people always keep it straight here in America, not thinking about the rest of the world that is being colonized, that is suffering from, uh, uh, you know, white supremacy you have now places in africa where africans can't go they won't allow black people into certain places in africa and that's ridiculous so we got to understand who is really in charge and what's going on and who these sellout african presidents are because there's a lot of them and we we're going to look at this stuff and you got to see uh what the agenda really is and that you know they're keeping us focused on America and American issues and our own issues and everything like that. Meanwhile, they have colonized most of the planet and they have most of the planet under their control, you know, under their systems. One of the things you'll find when you travel a lot and when you be in countries for a while, you'll, you'll see the systems the same. You'll see they have a healthcare system and, you know, they got social security numbers and birth certificates and what have you. And it's like, damn, I thought that was kind of unique to, you know, America and, and England. And, you know, when you get the same thing in Sweden, and, you know, sometimes when you have a small country like Sweden and other countries, they'll do that. But really, we understand it's a, mon a monarchy that's behind the scenes. And uh, because the country is predominantly white, you know, they let it be. Now, when we go and look at these countries that have been basically taken over, I mean, it's easy to see, you know, what's going on. When you take a look, we know that the banking system has been taken over. That's the first thing they do is instill this central bank, just like they did. 1913 with the Federal Reserve. We see this Rothschild-owned bank installed in these countries. And when you pay attention to all the countries that has a constitution and a president, you have a private central bank being set up. So right now, there's only three countries that don't have, you know, the so-called Rothschild private central bank. That's Cuba. We know North Korea. And uh, the third country would be, um, well, Syria used to be one. Syria used to be one. We know that um, Libya, Afghanistan, Iran. Iran would be the third one that doesn't have the uh, 
Roth, Rothschild Bank. But just pay attention. This is why I say history. So we got Iran. We got Cuba. We got North Korea. Only three countries right now that don't have the so-called Rothschild Private Central Bank. Right before that, who also joined this party was Sudan. We had uh, Syria. You had um, Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq. So we see what just happened with history. We see that, you know, 9-11 happened. We had invasion into Iraq. We had invasion into Afghanistan. Then we had Libya taken down, Syria taken down. So all these countries that was once not with a Rothschild Central Bank has been taken down. We have went to war with, taken over, and now installed this bank. And, and then it's like people can't put it together. It's like, okay, so what? This is for America, what have you. This is colonization. This is imperialization. This is genocide. This is these people are being wiped out. We have all these Syrians and people from a lot of these different countries fleeing their home, you know, because of war, because of what America has done and what their allies have done in these countries. And it's already been proven when you go back and look, even under Saddam, under Muammar Gaddafi, these countries was doing really well. So that was supposed to be this tyrant, murderer, killer, what have you. He actually ran the country really well and people was happy. I know Iraqis. I'm cool with a few Iraqis who talk about this, who that Saddam was fine and everything that was going on. They understood Saddam was put in place and what happened. But a lot of people will tell you Saddam did well. A lot of stories that we read about the bad things about Saddam was you know put there for us to feel the way we felt about Saddam's regime. But you actually talk to Iraqis, they'll say, no, you know. It wasn't that bad. Some things was uh, bad because of the laws he had in place. But if you had the unique opportunity to be in Iraq before, uh, during and after its destruction, I mean, you can see the change. And we see that Libya was doing well and these countries was doing well before the so-called, you know, American intervention before we came in here and uh, fucking minded our, didn't mind our own business and, you know, made their business ours. But when you look at what's taking place, it's clear. You know, it's the systematic takeover of countries around the world, the implementation of this central bank constitution and the control over the country. So now you have only these three countries with no private central bank. Again, Iran, Cuba, North Korea. You have Russia fighting to kick out the Rothschild Bank, which he basically don't want a Rothschild stepping foot into the country. You have China as well fighting to get rid of the Rothschild Bank. And you have um, Iceland fighting to get rid of the Rothschild Bank. We, we remember the whole rebellion that happened there, which should happen everywhere. People in Iceland overthrew the government. They seen it was crooked and what was going on, that they was plunging them into debt more and more and more, just like what's happening here in America. They didn't sit around and watch, you know, TV while, while it happened. You know, they went there and overthrew them, took them out. And um, they're trying to get rid of the bank as well. So we can see clearly, you know, when you look at history and pay attention to what's going on, it is the systematic takeover of countries around the world to get it under this umbrella of this whole, you know, new world order. Now, I always talk about the Bible and being brainwashed and how, you know, the Bible and God and our government system kind of goes hand in hand. And we got to understand how the Bible has groomed us to accept what our government is doing, because, you know, we accept the flaws in the Bible, you know, re religious people. So again, when you go back, I always compare this thing with the Bible. You know, we was given the Bible in slavery. And I mean that figuratively, not literally for anybody who want to act stupid. We was given the Bible during slavery, you know, figuratively. They taught us about this white Jesus or what have you and how to pray and sing to him. And, you know, we didn't really pay attention or really, you know, throw up a fit when, you know, somebody was killed or hanged or raped. When, you know, our prayers went unanswered, you know, people still just praised the Bible and believed in the Bible. There was no, no real backlash against God because, you know, once you start talking about God and talking against the Bible, people call you, you know, Antichrist or Satan or devil worship or, you know, crazy or stupid or what have you. And when you pay attention to the government system, it's basically the same way. You start talking against the government, people call you crazy, conspiracy theorists, un-American, you know, unpatriotic stupid crazy you know it's the same kind of comparison now the whole thing is when you look at the bible situation it's like i mean come on god doesn't talk to us so we can't basically curse god out and go to god to tell him that we're not going to follow him no more we can't get to that to the top we can't get there 
It's the same situation with a president. You can't really curse out a president and get to the president to voice your opinion or what have you. We can protest and do the things that we do, but we know it's futile. Nothing is going to happen. They're not just going to change policy because we out there with a bunch of signs. So to some people, it's almost like, why try? It's almost like some people would rather believe the lie to, than to accept the reality. And a lot of people are delusional about what's going on. So it seems impossible to talk against the Bible and go against it. It's better safe than sorry. You know, I feel like it's helping me in my life and that's how people feel. So they follow it. It's the same thing with this government system. Now we can look and see clearly we read Matthew and Matthew tells you pray and you shall receive, you know, ask and it shall be given to you. And we know that's just not true. Same thing with the government system. You had these presidents and senators or what have you say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It never happens. It doesn't come true. They don't fulfill the promises that they promise us. Just like the Bible doesn't fulfill its promise. And we have been conditioned by, you know, the Bible and understanding that things that we are being told and everything that we think we're going to get with the Bible, we're not going to get. And we have been set up for disappointment. And it's the same thing with the government system. We are being set up for disappointment. And you would think now, after all this time and all these presidents that passed, that we would have a system in place that would benefit the people and we would have eradicated poverty or what have you. Right now, you're talking about Donald Trump wanting to spend billions of dollars to build a fucking wall. A wall. The money that they're going to spend to build this wall will completely wipe out poverty in America. Period. So the money that they're, they're going to dedicate is enough money to get all these homeless people back on their feet and get this economy really gone strong and really doing well. Schools can get rebuilt. You know, after school program that he wants to cut and, the, you know, the, after the school lunches and all that they're trying to cut, all that stuff can be fixed with the money they're going to put in this damn wall. And you mean to tell me that you believe the entire American people is more for the building of a wall than for schools being built, after school program programs, school lunches? We know that we are more for those programs than for a damn wall. But. They're not going to give us what's in the best interest of the people. The wall is going to be built. And we got to think about that. You know, is our government doing what's best for us? And we know that's not true. So we got to pay attention and understand that everything is a deception. And when you start comparing it to what's going on around the world and understand that, one, they don't really get into on our in our news media what's really going on in Africa and Latin America as far as these um these countries that have been colonized and the whole presidency or what have you. We've seen in South Africa what's going on with the Constitution trying to be changed so the people can take back the land that is rightfully theirs. So it's a lot of stuff that's happening that has been happening that we're not understanding that when you go back and look at history, it's telling you a story and it's telling you who the real enemy is and what the agenda is. So a lot of us are still brainwashed by the whole presidency. A lot of people still actually believe that we actually elect presidents in this country and that the whole electoral system and everything that happens is all real and it's all true. I think that the Obama administration and what happened with Obama the last eight years is more than enough proof to show people that the presidency is a puppet post. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, Obama just seems like you know, a real genuine dude who gets it. And he says he understands the history of African-Americans. Now, you would think with the history of racism in this country, with the history of the injustices and the things that have been happening to black people in America, the fact that we understand about, you know, Jim Crow and the whole civil rights movement, the fact that we understand about all the police shootings and killing of all these unarmed unarmed innocent black people, excuse me. And um, the fact that we understand that it has been laws and things put in place to hinder black people. You had Elizabeth Warren. I, I showed you that video in a couple of um, my previous videos with Elizabeth Warren going on record and speaking and laying down the history and the laws that have been put in place to hinder black people in our progress. It has already been proven that the CIA brought crack cocaine into the black community. We understand the uh, situation that is going on and how 
the crack epidemic basically has led to the the impoverished state of African Americans. It contributed, you know, if not a hundred percent, then at least eighty percent to what's going on. So many things that have been wrongfully done to black people purposely by the system. You would think this president who said he understand all this black man. Now we know his mom's supposed to be white or what have you, but if nobody knew what color his mom was, everybody would say, you know, he's a black man. He's the first black president. That's what they call him. But you would think that Obama would have done something to reverse these things, to to bring us up a little bit, to help us out a little bit. He did absolutely nothing. When I asked Obama supporters, you know, name one thing Obama did for black people, specifically only black people. And they go silent. It's nothing that they can point to. And we can point to the things that he did for other people. He did for corporations and companies and nothing for the black community. He did nothing to fix what what is wrong, to make things right. He could have made a difference. And I think that a lot of the white people who voted for him, the ones who actually believed that he was going to be you know, a real true president, understood that, OK, this black man is going to come in. And he's going to fix the wrongs that's happening with black people. So because I'm tired of hearing black people shit, let this black dude be president and make us make it equal or what have you. And I think a lot of white people accepted that, you know, regular white people. (laughs) Uh, A lot of racist people was pissed, of course. But we also as well expected Obama to come in and to fix a lot of these things. The people who understood the laws and things that was in place to hinder us. I mean, at least to go back and have somebody look at all the people that's in prison, all the black people that's in prison due to uh, unfair uh, sentences and due to racism or what have you. At least go and look at them, get their cases and get them out of prison so they can, you know, help their families or what have you. At least look at some of these laws and things that's in place to keep um, black people pushed back and to keep us from reaching our full potential. I mean, just do something to even the playing field. And, you know, he did nothing. Instead, he sat back and he watched. So we have more black people killed by cops, uh, killed by white cops during Obama two terms than black people killed by white cops in the 50s, 60s and 70s combined. I talked about this before. And that's that's crazy. So this is what he did. This is what he's going to be on record as, as sitting by and watching, you know, hundreds of black people slaughtered by white cops and doing absolutely nothing to protect us or doing absolutely nothing to put put something in place to uh, to help us out and to kind of bridge the gap and um, help us uh, get to a place that's equal uh, to white America. And as I said before, our ancestors understood that this would never happen. This would not take place because they knew, you know, who they was working for, who was the um, captors. And we have forgotten that. And the fact that we put a lot of trust into this black man to fix things and to make things better, and that did not happen in two terms, should tell you right there that, you know, the presidency is bullshit. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to defend Obama and say, well, you know, they blocked them. The Republicans blocked them. They wouldn't let him do this and that. And that's what I talked about before. Obama had in his power executive orders, which he passed over 100 of them, where he could have, uh, you know, just used executive orders to get laws passed to at least raise the uh, the wages in America to help people out. But, you know, he didn't do anything really to help people. He just talked really well. And I understand that people liked him because Obama seems cool. He plays basketball and you know he was cool with all the rappers and everything like that. And he seemed like a cool guy. Everybody loved, everybody liked. They loved him. He spoke well. And, you know, this is the same characteristics of a con man. It's just that simple. Con men speak well. They tell you what you want to hear. And, you know, they never give you what they promise because it's a con. And this is what con men do. This is why they call it Congress. They're all con men. It's just that simple. So we look at the religious institution, we look at our government institutions, and we see that they are both conning us. They have been conning us for, you know, a long time, (laughs) a long time. Yet these two institutions are the two biggest institutions, and they have remained so, you know, for, you know, hundreds of years. And why is that? Why? You know, what's going on? It's because we are all brainwashed by that Bible and by 
you know, this government system. And, you know, they have a unique situation set up to where we don't really have the power as individuals to to do anything. You know, the few people like me and others who wake up and see what's going on, we don't really have the power to reach millions of people to get people to wake up and to understand our point of view. You know, it's just that simple. And, you know, it's it's almost futile to, to do anything or say anything because, you know, we're not going to reach the amount of people to get this point across. But, you know, putting out videos like this and other videos that people uh, put out can at least kind of spread the word and get it into the consciousness of most people so people can understand what's really go going on. But again, as I said, we are consumed by reality and consumed by life. And, you know, the obstacles that they have put in our way, paying bills and going to work and, you know, making it to school on time and getting good grades or what have you, taking care of your kids, worry about being shot, worry about feeding yourself, worry about having on the right clothes and sneakers, what time your favorite show goes on, what have you. So much stuff that we are consumed by that people believe is more important than uh, what our government is doing with our freedom, with our money, you know, and what our safety. So we got to pay attention to what's what's been taking place and what they're doing around the world. And who are these people that's running this stuff? Because this all is going back to one group and people sit up there to call you crazy when you talk about a new world order, when you talk about white supremacy. When you talk about what's been taking place, you have some white people who actually look at this stuff and say, well, they're helping people in Africa. You know, we had a whole Ebola breakout and you have Africans saying that the uh, Red Cross was the one injecting people with Ebola. You have terrorist groups like Boko Haram and all these bombings and all the stuff that's going on over there. You have the uh, colonization of African countries. And, you know, we look at all the pictures and everything and everybody say, well, Africa ain't messed up. Africa is beautiful. You know, of course, we know it's beautiful. And then you look at the cities and all the structures that have been built in Africa and what these Europeans have done. And we look at that. And a lot of people say, wow, you know, the Europeans are doing good in Africa. Not understanding that, you know, these buildings, these corporations and companies are just, you know, more things, more more tools, more weapons that they are using to get one African people to work and make these people rich in Africa. It's the same thing that's happening here. Make these people more rich in Africa at the same time draining the land and the country of its resources. It's the same thing. So, you know, we see big builders and people think it's cool and we think, oh, well, African people are employed. It's the same slave system that's here in America where you got to work to survive. And when you install a constitution and you install this system that puts people underneath this time schedule, when you take away their real freedom and their real spirituality and you turn them into robots, this is what's happening in Africa. We talk about a land of people who had true spirituality, who was truly connected. And they're taking that away from these people and they're being raised like we are here in America under this constitution, under this president, under these rules, under time. You know, they got to be to work on time now. You know, they got to pay attention to their white masters, their white bosses, and they got to work and they got to do these things instead of being spiritual people who was connected. And they're taking that away in Africa. And we're not paying attention to it because we're not paying attention to history. And we're not looking around the world at other people. We're so focused on ourselves, not looking at the fact that in Africa, in Latin America, colonization is still underway. Imperialization is still underway. And they talk about, you know, things like diplomacy and, uh, 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 you know, having a republic and a democratic republic and what have you. Democratic system or what have you. It's all bullshit. These are all European terms used to colonize, used to take over uh, lands of people of color. And this, ha this has been happening for hundreds of years. When you see these things coming into these countries, it's like, for what? So, again, we can't sit back and keep saying this stuff is not happening. There's no such thing as white supremacy. White supremacy is still alive and well all around the world, not just here in America. And we got to pay attention to it. Now, also, people have to understand what white supremacy really is. And it's not every single white person oppressing every single person of color. We have to understand white supremacy is an institution that is implemented by a government structure that is using white people to separate countries, to separate, uh, uh, you know, people, 
to paint this image of white dominance over people of color. It's just that simple. You know, the fact that white is superior race, that white people are in the image of God, you know, everything we have been seeing in this country for, for decades, for hundreds of years, this is white supremacy. White supremacy is having the power to control a group of people and decide whether they are going to be economically strong or weak. That's white supremacy. White supremacy is having the power to pull a, mil a military and a person's country to control the people and control the resources. This is white supremacy. And it's all, you know, done by Europeans. And we call it white supremacy because it's done by Europeans. Not because Linda and John and Carol and all these people that work in Walmart and Walgreens or what have you are white. Not because they exist. And this is what we got to start doing. Again, when you go back to religion, we don't point the finger at God and angels. We point the finger at something else when things go wrong. We point the finger at Satan or demons. I got the devil in my life when things go wrong. Prayers don't get answered. Well, I must not be right with God. I got to get my shit together. We point the finger at everything instead of pointing our finger at the book and saying, you know what? Something ain't right with this book. It promised me something in Matthew and I'm not getting it. It promised me things and I'm working hard and I'm praying. And I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do under God. You know, I'm not still receiving any blessings. I'm not, you know, getting my my prayers answered. You know, people who have prayed over a sick mother and lost them, you know, to a disease or what have you. And it's like, we're not still, you know, what's up, God? I've been praying for months for my mom to live and she died. But it's no backlash to God. People still keep their faith and they still, you know, keep on praying. Then we look over to the government and there's no backlash. You know, we point the finger at something else. So we as African-Americans, when we see the oppression and white supremacy, you know, we hear that white supremacy, we automatically point to any white person. And we say, you're a white supremacy. Not understanding that it's no way that these white people can be white supremacy. White supremacy is a system that only a government can really control, not regular people, not regular white people. And we got to make that connection and understand because we're not looking at this government structure. We keep looking at every single white person because they scream a racial slur or what have you. They are racist. They're not white supremacy. They're part of the problem. They are what white supremacy is using to control us. They're part of that problem, but they're not all white supremacy. We got to understand that and stop pointing the finger at Joe Blow and look at this overall government system that has taken over, not just here, but in Africa as well. And a lot of people just can't see that because we think about white supremacy, we automatically point to the white man. The average white man is basically being used. And um, we can see it clear as day and I understand people are angry. They don't want to see it. They just automatically want to be upset. And um, we waste our energy with that. We waste our energy screaming at these racist people. So what? It's a bigger problem. It's a bigger enemy. And we got to um, look at history, understand who the enemy is and what they are doing and what they what they have planned. And that's the main thing, what they have planned, the agenda. And, um, yeah, they almost have it fulfilled. And that's the crazy thing. We got to pay attention to it and understand that Iran, North Korea, which we're going to see, of course, coming up, is going to be the next points of interest. They're already talking about possibly a war in uh, North Korea. They're circling Iran, which Iran is a fucking death trap. It's going to be tough. So they had to make sure they circle it to, to get in there. That's not going to be an easy win. And not just that. Now you have a president like Trump, <clears throat> excuse me, like Trump. Who's going to fight for Trump? And I was in the military. I got Marine buddies. I got Army buddies. We was just talking about this yesterday, where you have a lot of people in the military that are not willing to die for Trump, especially black folks, especially people of color. They're not willing to die for Trump. So what kind of war is going to be waged? You know, it's, it's going to be a drone war. We don't we're not going to really see too many troops out there because uh, a lot of people are not willing to go through with this. So we got to understand we're going to see because it's clear now. It, it took so long for us to figure out what's going on. But um, we, we can see where they're headed and what the targets are. We don't got the, um, the central bank set up. They're coming. So even when you look at the word uh, constitution, it goes back to Rome. 
And we understand, as I talked about before, our system, our government system is set up just like ancient Rome with our, you know, Senate and um, what the presidency or what have you, just like ancient Rome. So when we look at these African countries and the fact that they have constitutions and presidents and what have you, we can see who is controlling what. And we understand that we have the Rothschilds and we have the, uh, the banking system and we have Rome that has been in power you know, for hundreds of years. And we got to understand that this is a system that has been uh, set in place a long time ago that is still in power and still uh, fulfilling their agenda. And this is what we're seeing with the colonization and the imperialization of these countries. And um, it exists. You know, a lot of people get offended. White people get offended when you talk about uh, white supremacy, when you talk about colonization or what have you. A lot of people get offended as if, you're bringing up some old stuff when this stuff is still right in our faces. And, of course, they control the news media, so it's just not going to be. We're not ever going to see it put out there the way it should be. And a lot of people don't understand that the very people that is in control of uh, white supremacy and in control of what's going on own the media source, of course. And they're not going to just come out and say it. And you just you get white people just trying to defend it because they don't want to be associated with it. And they think when you speak about white supremacy, you're talking about them. And we're not talking about them. If you are not trying to oppress black people or trying to harm black people in any way, then we're not talking about you. You have nothing to do with it. You know, chill the fuck out. And that's the that's the problem. I mean, a lot of white people think we are just attacking them and we are, you know, being racist like we could be racist. And. They're not looking at history and they're not looking around the world and seeing what's taking place. Now, when I point this out to uh, a lot of white people, they're shocked. And I've done this. I've been in a lot of conversations where I point this out. Well, okay, you know, they say, stop talking about slavery. It happened so long ago and this and that. And, you know, white people have helped the world so much and we helped so many people. And if you point to Africa, where have they helped Africa? They installed constitutions. They basically took over. And made it as if they was helping us out when really they was raping what we had and using it to further their uh, wealth and their their reach, their control. So, you know, Africa is a little bit different because, you know, it's only but so much they can do there. They can't really go hard as they want to because the people will rise up. And again, we've seen that happening in South uh, South Africa with the uh, people in South Africa wanting the constitution changed. They want they want their land back. And you know, even when you look at the video in uh, South Africa when it was throwing the people out of the meeting, these were black people, this was the Africans that was on the security team that's throwing out other Africans who are trying to take back the country for them and their people. That's control right there. That's brainwashing. I'm trying to help us get back to a level of power and to reach uh, uh, the rest of the country, the rest of African people, and to take back what's rightfully ours. And here you are, an African man and woman, helping them take our country. And, you know, the security team, I was shocked that these, these was African men that was throwing this to their own people who was trying to basically save the country for them. So a lot of you are still falling for the trap. You are going with the media narrative. And anytime you are going with what the entertainment world is putting out, what mainstream media is pointing out. Uh, anytime you are going with that flow, you are following the trap. You are following exactly what they want you to follow. It's always a hidden agenda. It's a reason why they do things, why they put things out. So, you know, we can just go back and just, as I talked about before, pay attention to everything we have been seeing. One, since Obama has taken office back in 2008. And just pay attention and look at, you know, Oscar Grant, the whole Fruitvale Station movie, and, you know, all of the killings of unarmed black people that we have been seeing, all of the movies and TV shows that have been coming out to get you into this frenzy of racial separation and hatred for each other. You know, uh, we could just go and look at the movies um, straight out of Compton. I mean, even 12 Years a Slave, the Nat Turner Insurrection. I get out, of course. You know, the TV show Shots Fired. And anybody who has watched the last season that just came out of Orange is the New Black, you see the direction that they are going in. And they're going to keep pounding this whole racial narrative of, uh, you know, racial separation and divide. It is a reason behind it. Now, 
the Get Out uh, movie is, um, you know, I wasn't going to go see the movie. It's something I wasn't going to go see. I understood what the narrative was going to be about just from looking at the preview. And I understood that, you know, um, it was definitely going to be something that's going to try to point black people in a certain direction. And that's exactly what the movie was about. I know a lot of people have put out videos talking about this uh, movie or what have you. And, um, you know, the thing is, you know, I didn't go see the movie. I supported the local bootleg man and I bought a bootleg copy. Supported the brother. <laughs> uh and watch the movie, and it's yeah, it's unbelievable. And to me, it's my my focus because I think deeply. I'm a critical thinker, and my first point is how, why, you know. First of all, why make that movie? Now we know uh, what's his name, Jordan uh, Peele. Supposedly directed and written a screenplay. And, you know, Jordan Peele is a funny dude. Everybody watches Key and Peele. And um, these dudes are hilarious and funny. You know, uh, a lot of uh, real black comedians have come out and talked against them, basically saying that, you know, they, was, they are handpicked. They're not really black. They don't really speak for the black community. They both got white wives and they got white friends and what have you. And, you know, Dave Chappelle talked against them. Um, Ari Spears talked against them. Even Russell Simmons talked talk against them. And a lot of people have come out against them saying that these dudes are basically not really, you know, for the black community and, and for us. They are good at what they do, comedy, and they are funny at what they do. And you know, they can't even really play, you know, real black people comfortably. Even when they act, try to act like, you know, gangsters, it's like an act. They can't really portray, you know, the average, you know, black person in a black community. So, you know. A lot of people probably took the movie as, you know, it's just stuff that, you know, Key and Peel do, uh, does with they um, sketch comedy and they always talk about these type of issues and they probably thought it was funny to put out a movie like this. And that was the little bit that got me to kind of watch the movie. I thought, well, maybe it's a funny side to it or something like that because, you know, you didn't really get that from the preview. The preview made it look really serious, but then, you know... Um, some parts was a little bit funny to me, the, you know, the black dude, uh, uh, you know, would try to shake his hand and everything like that. And, uh, you know, it, I thought it might be some funny parts in, in this movie or something, you know, different. But when you watch the movie, anybody that's conscious can clearly see what the movie is about. And, I mean, uh, it, to me, it was so obvious and blatant. And it's like, why? How? How did, how, how did he do this? How did he get this movie out with their approval? You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, they're trying to tell you something. You know, basically, the whole town, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to really go into too much details. But basically, you have the whole town in on it. And you pay attention to those top leaders, you know, uh, from the movie. You know, it's basically it's telling you that the people at the top that we all look up to, you know, so-called white people, uh, we can say black people as well, are against you. Everybody in the town was in on it, but the people at the top was like, you know, actors, entertainers or what have you, doctors and lawyers, famous, prominent people in on this whole thing. And um, the black dude, uh, the lead character in, in, the, in the movie, you know, he had his suspicions about a lot of stuff, but he just kept going against, you know, what he already knew. And the movie is basically it basically stands up for the conscious black man. A little bit because it's saying that, you know, conscious people understand what's going on with the system. And the movie is basically about, you know, uh, the hidden part is basically about us falling for the system, us following the system and the system, you know, basically trying to control our mind and lead us to our doom. And we are so trusting and so accepting of the system and accepting of white people that, you know, we basically fall for, you know, the bullshit. And it takes a conscious black person to to help another black person out of the situation, which basically happens in the movie. And, um, you know, every time when you try to get conscious, the system is there to basically re brainwash you and, and pull you back in, you know, and. What a lot of people are going to take from that movie is don't trust white people. Don't trust no white people. Don't trust nothing when it should be 
don't trust this system. And I can see from a lot of the comments on Facebook about the movie, uh, a lot of people was just like, you know, a lot of people who got the inside, you know, part of the movie, but the movie was really trying to speak to was saying that, you know, we're too trusted of these white people and, you know, uh, they leading us to our doom and this and that. But then you had a lot of black people who really got it and was like, you know, putting all the pieces together. When you go back and look at all these movies that I talked about and just the, the situation in America over the last eight years, I mean, and then you have a movie like this called Get Out that comes out with the subliminal message with the hidden you know, narrative that's basically saying, get out. And to anybody who think critically, you thinking, I mean, damn, what is it really saying? You know, what is this? What is it talking about? And you can't help but put it with all the other movies and what we have been seeing uh, in our reality. And then the fact that they keep pounding this whole racial racial uh, divide. The whole racial situation. They, they make it TV shows about it. You know, Orange is the New Black was one of the most popular shows on um, Netflix. That whole last season was about race. And they pounded and pounded and pounded the issue leading up to what? Trump being elected and this whole racial tension and everything like that. And they've been pounding it. They put this movie out and the movie is popular. It has done well. It's doing well. And what is going on? And for black people who are falling for the trap, the trap is going to be separation. Don't trust no white people. Even though we constantly see white people sticking up for us, you know, even back during the time with Dr. King, we can't, we, we keep seeing white people waking up, making videos and saying, you know, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. You have people who, um, because in a movie, again, the narrative, the narrative is basically saying that, you know, white people know what's going on with us. They understand it. Because the, in the movie, you have basically the whole town in on it. So they're basically trying to say, well, white people know what's going on. But they sit by and allow it to happen to us. Even when you look at what Jane Elliott did, she did the whole experiment. She told white people, if you want to be treated like black people or people of color, you know, raise your hand. You know, or stand up, whatever she said. And nobody stood up or nobody raised their hand. And she said, well, that means you know what's happening to black people. Yet you do nothing about it. And it's kind of what the movie was trying to convey. They know what's going on. They understand what's happening to us, but they do nothing. And as a black person, if you are not conscious enough, you're going to fall for the narrative. But being conscious also means being able to see the trap. And movies like this is going to use a lot of conscious people who have followers to give you that message because, you know, they're going to tell you, see, we can't mess with this white man. We can't do nothing with this white man. And my whole thing is, and I keep trying to tell people, I'm, I'm probably the only person or one of the few people who is actually talking about unity. And it's just something that black people just don't want to accept right now because of everything that's happened. But you have to understand why it's important. See, if we follow the narrative of separation, we lose. Y'all need to understand reality. And, and pay attention to what's going on. We have a unique opportunity to basically strengthen, you know, strengthen our fight, to strengthen our, our cause. And we doing that. We have been doing that for decades by getting everybody, not just black people, but other people of color, white people as well, to understand what's going on and what's taking place. And this is what I try to do with my message, what I talk about. Everybody need to look at what they're trying to do and what's going on. A lot of people see it. It's divide and conquer. It's separation. And by doing that, creating separation, they're able to use us to do what they're doing. And that's basically take over everything. So while we are here arguing about movies like this and arguing about the past and slavery or what have you, as I talked about, we can see that they are systematically taking over the world. And it's leading leading up to something. So that movie was weird because it's like, wow, you know, what 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 is that about? So, you know, you just got to look at Trump and everything that's going on with this wall and everything that's, that's that could possibly be happening. It's all leading up to something. And it's going to be up to us to either fall for that trap by following the narrative that they're putting out of separation 
or to understand that it's a trap and not to follow what they're talking about, to pay closer attention to what's going on and how it's going to affect everybody, but it's going to affect black people even more so. We got to be smart. If this is chess, not checkers, not Call of Duty. This is a very strategic game. And if you play it right, then you would be anybody that's in a position of uh, who understands war, in a position of uh, general, or in a position of leading people to victory. You understand the strategies you know, of war and, and how it's played out and how things have to be a certain way for in order for you to win. Wars are fought on scales. You know, a war between you and uh, three people, you know, your strategy is going to be different versus, of course, one on one. So you have to understand a war of this magnitude and the position that they are in and trying to divide and conquer the world and control and take over the world. The strategies that they will have to use and they are employing them. And when you understand war and what happens, divide and conquer is the, the only way. Hitler himself talked about this. Divide and conquer is the only way for you to really take over nations. And that's exactly what he did in Germany. He made these people uh, believe, he convinced them that the Jews was the problem. And look at what happened. And um, it's the same thing that's going to be going on here. And we are basically walking into a trap. And a lot of your leaders and people who you look up to are leading you into the same thing. And I'm telling you that now. A lot of people have this whole narrative of that we can go on ahead and just unite as black people and win this entire thing just as black people. And I know we want to believe that, but I'm a realist and I understand war. And anybody who has read this book, because they obviously are going by this book and they understand war. Uh, this is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And a lot of people, this is a deep book. I mean, it, it's basically what they're doing. And they understand what it takes to do to complete their agenda. And they're using white people and they're using us to do that without with them making money in the process and doing very little work. We are basically doing all the hard work for them and we will finish ourselves in the end uh, if they fulfill their agenda. It will be us. We'll ask for our demise. We'll ask for our own destruction. And this is what it's leading up to. So everybody who is, um, you know, we are so against Trump and everybody is protesting Trump. And it's exactly obviously what they want to happen. They want it to happen. What it's going to lead to, I do not know. What is going to happen, I do not know. But that narrative, we are following. Hate Trump. They gave it to us. We're following it. The whole narrative of racial separation. We're following it. You got a lot of black people saying, oh, fuck white people. I hate white people. Fuck them, fuck them. And a lot of black people are following it. Not the way that they want to yet. Not enough black people are not the way that they want to, which is why they keep pounding and pounding the issue. Because one, you're dealing with so many white people who are understanding and waking up and joining the fight, who can see the problem. And um, that's a big problem for them. But at the end of the day, you know, um, the war is going to come down to, are we able to see the trap before we fall into it? And this is why, you know, I talk about what I talk about and why I talk about unity and why I talk about we need to understand what's going on and stop following exactly what the enemy wants us to follow. And um, it's going to lead us, you know, it's going to put us in a bad place. So I've been called so many names. I don't give a damn. People can call me Coon or what have you, whatever they want to say. But when you pay attention and look at what they're doing and understand that we're following what they want, following what they want us to follow, you know, it's a trap. And, and it's the popular thing is to just be like, you know, black power and, you know, uh, all white people are racist and all this and that and, and not understand the agenda and what it's really going to take for us to uh, to win. So I always speak on this because, you know, we got to wake up because I sense a plan to really, you know, wipe out a lot of black people. And I seriously sense that, you know, just by. You know, Trump talking about sending the feds in and sending, you know, the uh, National Guards, whatever, into Chicago. 
you know, if the violence gets too, gets too crazy. You know, these people have the power to push whatever uh, whatever picture they want to. They can paint whatever picture they want. They can push whatever kind of image they want onto the American people. And it's very easy for them to do so with the control of the media. You know, the only outlet we have is social media and having things like YouTube and Facebook to really put the truth out. But that, that doesn't always get to everybody. And a lot of people don't always accept it because by, by the time we're trying to fix the problem, a lot of people are already too mad and too upset. And that's what's going on, you know, with me and my situation and me trying to talk about what I talk about. A lot of people are already upset. They're too mad. They don't want to be rational. They don't want to hear, you know, anything else. They are too upset. And it's funny. You had Captain America Civil War. If anybody who's seen that movie uh, with Marvel, um, same thing, divide and conquer. It was no bad guy in that movie when you pay attention. There was no big boss that they had to fight. The dude just understood how to divide and conquer the team and what it would take to separate them to get them to destroy each other. And you see what happened at the end. You know, blew me away. But I, in watching the movie, it fits with the narrative of everything, of what's going on and what's happening. And, um, you know, you had the team turn on each other. Uh, and you had at the end, you know, Tony Stark didn't care that Bucky was brainwashed and, you know, he wasn't really in control of himself. All he seen was this dude killing my mother and father. I don't give a shit about nothing else. He got to die. Even though he is not the one in the wrong. Who did Tony Stark go after? He went after the person who wasn't in the wrong because they have been used to carry out a plan and it killed his mother and father. So he wanted to kill him instead of leaving and going on after the man and the people who brainwashed Bucky, who was really behind the death of, of his parents. He didn't do that when the movie ended. He didn't do that. So pay attention to what movies are trying to tell you. And that's the reason why I bring it up. That movie was trying to tell you exactly what's going on today. We will go after the scapegoat. You know, we will go after them. That's what we're doing. We're going after the white people, Joe Blow, Tom, Dave and Mickey, people who work in Home Depot, people who you know, who you fucking talk to, who you know are not racist. We are turning on them and saying that they are racist, but we know they're not because we don't give a shit. We are too upset about what's going on. We're too mad. We are being irrational. We are being controlled to do exactly what we are doing. And this is what we are seeing. So, again, you're going to hear people talk about, you know, when you hear people talk about the movie Get Out. And uh, the, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video, because a lot of people send me messages. Did you see the movie Get Out? Oh, no, no, white people, fuck this and that. We can't trust these motherfuckers. And da, da, da. Exactly how they want you to feel. And exactly how angry they want you to be. If you haven't seen Captain America Civil War, just watch that movie. I think it's on cable for uh, free right now. Or if you got Netflix, watch the movie. It's basically, it's, it's, <laughs> it's telling you what's going to happen. I mean, just all the names and the whole situation is, 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 is us. I mean, you got Captain America there. It's a whole, the whole government situation. And um, you got to pay attention. You know, remember, they tried to peg Tony Stark, you know, with the black character. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Tony Stark was doing what he was doing because the black mom of a, a black uh, African um, child who was killed, you know, she basically made him feel some type of way. And he wanted to sign, you know, the paperwork with the government because of this black kid. And remember that whole speech he gave and he was upset. So they already pegged Tony Stark as the black man. This is all, you know, the narrative they're trying to portray. So, again, at the end, when he's trying to kill Bucky and Captain America... Trying to kill Captain America. Think about it. Bucky. You know, these are, this is white people. This is all white terms. The white good guy. Understand the mental, you know, imagery they're trying to per, uh, project into your brain. So he's trying to kill these people. And they are completely not in the wrong. They are right. And um, you have to pay attention to how Hollywood gets across its message. And the message that is subliminally. subliminally <laughs> uh, I always come up with that word. 
uh, trying to be put into your head. And again, anybody who's seen Captain America Civil War will understand what I'm talking about. And it goes hand in hand with all those movies I just mentioned. It goes hand in hand with Get Out and whatever other new movies and TV shows that they will be putting out. Pay attention. It's a trap. It's a setup. So my purpose of this video is to get people to just go back and look. And to, one, pay attention to the last 30 years of Africa, South America. Pay attention to what has been going on. Really go and look up what has been happening and everything that's been taking place. Because they give us a glimpse in the media for maybe two days. They might talk about something and that's it. It's on to something else. And then, again, you are consumed by life and reality, so you don't really check up on these things. It's not bothering you right now. But when you are an historian, when you are a person who does research, it's just stuff that just can't happen. You just got to look at it. You just can't help it to find these things out when you research in certain things and you go and look like, well, damn, you know, all of Africa has basically been colonized, you know, except for certain pockets. They everywhere. You're looking, most of the country's got constitutions now, presidents. You know, certain uh, areas have kings and queens, but, you know, this stuff is controlled. What the hell is a prime minister? What is that? You know, who is implementing this stuff into these African countries? Who is behind it? Who came in there and said to these so-called primitive African people, this is what you need to do. Here go Christianity. Here go Islam. Here go a constitution. Here go a president. Do things this way. Meanwhile, the people are not benefiting from the, um, the success, the wealth of the country. You have foreign people benefiting from it. And it's the same thing here in America. We are not benefiting. We're not benefiting from America. They have basically stripped America down so far to where we're not really producing nothing. And we're not making money as a country. And everything that's made is, you know, we already know what's happening overseas somewhere in China or what have you. The country is not making no money to even, you know, uh, give the people or help the people. We generating so much money off of entertainment. You know, off of corporations that's generating all this money. So since it's not the country generating all this money, you got these individual people generating all this money. It's the money is going to them. And they don't live here, a lot of them. The money is going to them, and it's stimulating their corporation and their company. And it's not going into, you know, the communities. Now, we could take it on a smaller level and go to a lot of these white communities that where you have the white people who own these companies and own these small business, businesses and, and are doing well. They can contribute to their economy. And we don't have that. You know, we don't have that in the black community. We still need to grow it. But they're trying to create the same situation over in Africa and, and down in Latin America to where you're going to have small groups of Europeans, white people, what have you, creating corporations and companies and sucking the life out of these countries and draining them of resources and money, and it's not going back into the people. And we've seen it in Africa, we've seen it here in America, and it's, it's, this is the plan, this is what's happening. So there is no, you know, bullshit when we talk about white supremacy. There is no, we just talk and we just being racist. We're seeing it, it's everywhere. You're forgetting history. You're not paying attention to the rest of the world because they can pull that veil over your eyes here in America and blind you with entertainment, sports and what have you. And you're not paying attention to Africa. Of course, white people are not because they don't give a shit. And then now black people, we're not. We're starting to wake up more towards. But we ain't paying attention. We're not looking at the fact that these countries got presidents. And you got some people who are looking at it as a good thing. Oh, well, they're going over there helping the black people who was basically killing each other and who didn't have shit, who are starving to death. They came over there and installed a constitution to help the people. Bullshit. Bullshit. And, you know, these people were, were okay. They were surviving for thousands of years. Africa went on. We have structures. We built civilizations way before any European civilization. This, this I have proven. I've proven this in, in previous videos. We had kings. We ruled. Things were fine. We traded with people around the world. This is all stuff that is proven. We didn't need uh, European implementation of a constitution and a president and a whole government system that is anti-African and against the people. We didn't need that. This is what they put in place. And now we understand why. It's colonization. It's control. It's white supremacy. It is the complete takeover of lands of people of color and the, uh, the domination of Europeans. So as you do your research and understand what's taking place, you know, just understand this is a part of an agenda. 
that includes what's happening here in America and includes what's going to be happening in other countries around the world. And this is a part of the agenda, part of the plan of global domination of this whole new world order or what have you. And it's stuff that we can see and we can point to. So, again, don't let people tell you that this stuff don't exist and that there is no such thing as uh, colonization and fucking white supremacy or what have you. It exists. It's still here. And people need to understand it and know about it, black, white, or what have you. It exists. These people are still in business. And they're still operational. And they're still taking over shit and running shit. That belongs to us and belongs to other people of color. So, you know, I wanted to do this video. I um, want to thank everybody who uh, supported the last DVD. Uh, a lot of people were asking about the book, which I will be announcing a date any day. It should be coming out pretty soon. Uh, another book as well that I've been working on. I also want to thank everybody who has been uh, downloading the videos and been supporting what I've been doing and everything I've been putting out or what have you. It's a lot of information I've been putting out. And I know I go a lot deeper with the DVDs and what have you into a lot of the content that I put out. And, uh, you know, I have series I'm still working on for YouTube or what have you. So I'm, I'm doing a lot and putting out a lot as much as I can before I go take these trips. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on the Moors. Uh, I'm going to take a trip to Spain in June to do that. And um, it's a lot of stuff I'm going to be putting out. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for supporting, you know, all these years and people that have been with me. Uh, you know who you are, uh, you know, since I started doing this and putting this information out there. And um, I'm really appreciative of people who, who support and people who uh, send messages and what have you. And again, you know, I try to get to all the questions and everything like that. You know, it's it's a lot that's going on. It's a lot I'm, I'm uh, associated with right now. It's a lot of new not just business moves that I have embarked on, but just a lot of projects that I'm taking on. It's a lot of stuff I want to get out the way and get done. So things is going to be delayed. You know, that it happens. You know, I got a little team now that's helping me out, you know, uh, friends or what have you. So there's a lot more new stuff that's going to come up and a lot more things I'm going to be doing uh, uh, coming up in the future this year and next year. So it's going to be fun, good stuff. So thank you guys for taking the time to watch. And, and uh, again, Appreciate the support. See you guys next video.